Hey everybody, Mike here with everything about concrete.com. So what this video is going to be about is I'm going to show you how we saw cut our expansion joints. I'm going to show you how we clean the concrete and get it ready for sealing. And then I'm going to show you what I use for a sealer and how I seal it. So what we're doing is we stamped this patio yesterday and we usually wait 24 hours and we come back and the girls are stripping the forms off it. They're taking the pins and they're, you know, they're cleaning it up for me. And what I'm going to do is I'm laying out my saw cuts. Now, usually when I saw cut my concrete, I use my soft cut saw. I get a couple of them. But the guys, my guys, Luke and Darren, are using them today on a bigger project. So I had to improvise and I'm just going to use my skill saw with a diamond blade on it. And that's not going to be too bad. I'll use that 2x4 as a straight edge. So I don't have too many cuts to make. So it won't be too bad. Just a little dusty with this. That's all. So I got my mask on. Now we saw cut those lines in there. For those of you guys that don't know. To help control any random cracking. Or shrinkage cracking in the concrete. So we want to make the concrete crack in those saw cuts. So it stays nice and straight. And it just looks nice and neat. We don't want it to just crack wherever it wants to. So I'm laying out my joints. Um, probably about... Uh, they're around five or six feet apart. And that saw blade's going down a couple inches on this one. It only really needs to go down about an inch. But if it goes down a little bit deeper, just that's more likely to crack there. You can see how that that skill saw works with a diamond blade. It's not too bad. It only takes a a few seconds to cut a line like that. So this is part three guys of a th obviously a three part series. The part one I showed you how we formed and poured this concrete walkway. And then part two I showed you how we stamped it. And I'm going to finish off showing you what we do here. So if you want to check out those two parts I'll have them linked at the end of the video. And if you know if you want to learn how to do stamp concrete, um, in the process of making a course, so I'll have an in-depth in course for you guys. Just you know, leave me a comment down in the comments if that's something you think you're interested in. Is uh, you know purchasing that course once I get done with it. So I'm gonna in that course, you know, I'll go over everything I know about stamp concrete. I've been doing this about 30 years, and it's a great way to add. You know, if you if you do concrete already, but you don't do stamp concrete, it's a really good add-on for your business. There's a really high profit margin in it once you know how to do it right. So it, you can definitely make, you know, really good money if you know what you're doing here. But you got to know what you're doing because if you don't, if you just go out and try to do this stuff without knowing, then you can really mess it up and it could end up costing you a lot of money. So I'm going to cover everything in that course that you need to know and it's just then it's just a matter of going out and doing it you know starting practicing on something small and then working your way up to some bigger projects so I got that one last line to cut and then we're gonna move on to cleaning this thing that's T and Abby there T is my daughter she's the one on the left Abby's her best friend they're uh, in college both of them and they're my summer help so I had them for about, I don't know, 10 or 11 weeks this summer. That was a big help. It was fun working with my daughter. All right, we got that up. Got that done. I'm going to pick that saw up, and then I'm going to start cleaning this thing. So when we clean our stamp concrete, you know, we, we try to do it the next day most of the time and get that excess release powder off there. If uh, if it's cold out, I mean, if it's in the 50s or something, we might leave it on a day or a couple days. But generally, we try to pour the concrete one day and stamp it, and then come back, clean it, saw it and clean it the next day, and then come back and seal it the third day. So we get everything done, and then... Everybody else that has to come in and finish their thing, you know, other contractors, they're not waiting for us. Once we clean this thing, you know, we don't want other people walking on it, you know, 
getting sawdust on it, getting dirt on it, whatever. We want to come right in and seal it and get it over with. So this is how we seal it. You know, we got about a 3,000 PSI pressure washer. We got a fan tip and that release powder pretty much washes off everything with the just the pressure washer. If we do get some on something, we'll take a little Dawn dish detergent with a little sponge scrub brush and we'll just wipe it off like that wood deck you see right there. You just wipe it off, hit it with the pressure washer again and it comes right off. Looks like brand new. And then we take uh, some Dawn dish detergent, put it in a five gallon bucket, fill up the bucket and then we scrub after I get done pressure washing most of the release off, we'll scrub the concrete just kind of like you're washing a car. You'll see Abby doing that in a minute. What T is doing is when you stamp the concrete, you know, when you put the stamps together with the seam, sometimes you'll get a little bit of paste that pushes up in between the seam. And all she's doing is just rubbing those seams and, and knocking off that little bit of paste there that might have pushed up in between the seams. It would, it would just wear off anyway, but we just like to knock it off. And she's just using a, a metal stake to do that, the rounded part of it. So it rubs off pretty easy, pretty fast. And then I can just pressure wash any excess, any residue from it off, and then we'll seal it. You can see there, Abby's scrubbing it now with the, just a push broom and a Dawn dish detergent. And I'm moving my way right along from one end of the sidewalk to the other. I don't hold the fan tip too close. You can see I got it about 16 inches away from the surface. I don't want to damage the surface. It is still pretty green. You know, it's, it's only a day old. So we definitely don't want to do any damage here. But we want to get this thing cleaned and sealed. So... The excavator come back and put some lumen around this thing and get it done. You can see that slope for those of you guys who watch me pour this thing. The slope from the driveway down to that flatter pot really isn't too bad at all. That's less than 1 in 12 so it's less than ADA. Not that they really needed ADA here. ADA is, uh, is for wheelchair access. It has to be a certain slope for those of you guys that don't know. And some people were asking if that was within ADA code and it definitely is. So I've gone back to the other end and I'm rinsing off some of the dish detergent residue there from Abby scrubbing it. I'll, I'm gonna rinse that down a couple times, make sure I get all the residue off. So, you know, if if you're going to take time to stamp the concrete and make it look really nice, you really got to take the time to clean it and get as much of that residual release powder off as you can. Because if you don't and you go to seal it, your sealer is not going to bond to the concrete. And then over time, it could be a month, it could be two months, it could be over you know the winter. For our, In our case, where we live in Maine, that sealer is going to peel off and flake off in spots and it's just not going to look very good. It's going to kind of look like freckles. So it's important to take your time and wash this concrete really good. The only parts of the release powder you want left really are in the lower parts of the grooves, the lower parts of the stamp. And those are the parts that got actually pressed into the surface so they're a permanent part of the surface. Anything not permanent, you got to get off. The Dawn, you know, the dish soap will break up the release and it makes it a lot easier just to rinse off rather than just using water. Same goes for your tools. You get any of that release powder on your tools or on your hands or anything, Dawn dish detergent is about the best thing we found to take it off with. What do you guys use? For those of you guys who stamp concrete, do you find anything better than Dawn dish detergent? You know, leave me a comment down there and let me know. I'm always open-minded about using new products too. So uh, let me know down there in the comments what you guys use. 
So all in all, this probably took us, you know, time we get the forms off, get the saw joints cut, get it all cleaned. Probably about an hour and a half it took us to do this. So we was up here an hour and a half. And now we got it clean. Now we got to let it dry out. So we let it dry out for 24 hours. And yes, that's plenty dry enough to put sealer on. For those of you guys that have asked that before, you don't have to let it wait 30 days. You know, if you're using an acrylic sealer like we are, uh, those sealers are breathable. So if you put them on right, you're not going to have any trouble with them. So we show up the next day. We bring a leaf blower with us just in case somebody's walked on it or there's leaves or pine needles or any other dirt or debris on it from the wind. And we just blow that stuff off. So what I'm using is I'm using Foundation Armor's AR350 wet look sealer and that's my favorite sealer for stamp concrete it helps darken the surface a little bit it does leave you know a little tiny bit of a sheen it's more of a matte finish type sealer but it's the best one I've found for stamp concrete I'll have a link for that down in the description I put on three really light coats on this thing so I you know thick isn't good when you put sealers on thin to win so the thinner the better. I like going about 400 square feet a gallon. And again, I like it. I'm going to put three coats on this thing so I'll have really good coverage. You just don't want to let it puddle. You don't want to let it get too thick. That's when you start running into problems with any type of acrylic topical sealers. This stuff dries pretty fast too. So I'm waiting, even though it doesn't show it on the video here, I'm probably waiting about, you know, 20 minutes on a day like today where it's 70 degrees kind of sunny in between uh, in between hits with that sealer I'm waiting about 20 minutes before I seal it again so that's it guys I mean if you like this kind of video you know hit, hit the thumbs up button I appreciate it and I'll see you on the next video